Hello again, minions. It's Wheezy. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the cast off 762, an assault rifle I played with early on in Modern Warfare 2, and it's a really powerful gun. You may have heard by now. So in this video, I'm going to show you the build that I have set up for it, um, that I recommend the way that I play with it, and then I'm going to show you some gameplays and some streaks uh, that I got with it to give you an idea of how I would recommend to play with it, to have the most success. Um, so I'll walk you through some of those as well. Um, so first let's jump in and look at my kind of preferred build that I have for it right now. Um, I haven't done any tuning on it. If you want to tune things, I may do a separate video about that. Um, I would recommend trying to make a balance between keeping your aim down sight speed as fast as possible while also keeping your recoil control as well as your idle aim stability in check because a lot of what you might think is recoil in this game is actually the idle sway on your gun sometimes throwing you off target as you're firing so keep that in mind and you'll see that as I kind of break down these attachments that I use um, for the cast off 762 um, I like to use the true tech grip because it does sprint fire speed and aim down sight speed I find that that's very helpful in general and because the downside is recoil control I like to have to you know, I have to kind of balance it um, with some of the other attachments. And this build is actually very similar um, to what you'll see on a lot of my assault rifle builds. Uh, to go along with that, uh, I like this X10 drop grip because it increases your aiming idle stability, which I just mentioned is, is important, as well as your hip fire accuracy. And I'll talk to you a little about that when I talk about the, the Stovall Doctor grip. Um, this decreases your walking speed, which I don't think is a big hit to take because most people don't spend a whole lot of time walking in this game. Uh, and if you do, walking a little bit slower, if anything, might make your footsteps slightly quieter. Um, for the cast off specifically, I'm using the Lockshot KT85 uh, muzzle because of the recoil control. The 762 actually is a bit jumpy side to side, which is uh, an issue the way that I like to play uh, at having the ability to play up close, keep that aim down sight speed, but also at medium and longer ranges, you wanna keep that recoil under control. If you're just rushing around crazy, trying to get point blank kills, then that may not be as important to you the way that I play um, this is. And again, this is gonna bring down our aim down sight speed and aiming stability. So the true tack grip and the X10 drop grip are to help counteract that um, to bring some of our aim down sight speed back and some of our idle stability. Um, I like using the laser attachment um, for hip fire control uh, because, and I'll show you here in the firing range in just a second, I think it gives you a lot more flexibility to react quickly and to get shots on target faster, even when you have a fast ADS speed, and I'll show you that here in just a second. Um, for this, I also run a Slimline Pro Optic. If you like the AK irons, uh, you can find something else to help improve the gun's characteristics other than the optic. I enjoy the optic on this gun. Um, so I'll jump into firing range real quick and show you um, how this kind of works with uh, the build that I have. So the way I like to test most assault rifles is that I want them to work well at close range, obviously, but also medium range. At longer range, you can get a good idea for how stable it is. Here you can see kind of the idle sway that isn't too bad here. Um, if you're doing kind of burst shots, if you can see that your shots mostly stay centered, that means you've got a good kind of idle stability and recoil control on there. If you don't have good recoil control, even doing bursts like this, you'll come down and you'll be kind of off target and you'll be constantly fighting it back and forth. So even though this isn't really a longer range gun, um, you can kind of test how you've got your recoil build on there. Um, but at closer to medium range, you want to be able to kind of lay down that full auto fire and be able to stay on target to get that kill. And you also want to keep in mind um, having a reasonably quick ADS speed. So this obviously isn't the fastest in the world, but it is nice and quick as far as an assault rifle. So if you want to react to someone, you know, you can get those shots on uh, quickly. And this is where I'll talk about having that um, hip fire attachment, right? So our hip fire is pretty good with that laser attachment. And one of the things that allows you to do when you get in these close range engagements is as you're go coming to aim down sights on someone, you can react and start firing with the hip fire as you're coming aim down sights, which gives you an opportunity to get a faster kill, even if your optics haven't come up all the way yet. Flash out. If you don't have that attachment, if you don't have that laser, then you get a lot more spread on your hip fire. So I have found on many occasions that having that better hip fire, and this grip also increases, increases that uh, hip fire accuracy, um, having 
that extra ability to land a couple of shots as your sights are coming up can make the entire difference in a gunfight. So that's my build for the Castoff 762. So now let's jump over to some streaks and show you how I use it in action. Okay, so this first clip I've got is on border crossing, and if you guys haven't seen my video on the border crossing map and you're still frustrated by it, go check that out. Uh, but here you'll see me using the flanking routes and using smart movement in this map with the AK uh, or the cast off 762 uh, to get fights that I think play to the advantage of this weapon, which is um, not necessarily close range, but closer to medium range engagements. This thing kills fast and about three bullets pretty much for uh for hits on on enemies and so you don't necessarily because of the higher recoil want to be trying to pick people off from longer range you want to get up and close uh, up close and personal with people to be successful with this gun um but you'll notice i'm also moving without doing a lot of sprinting footstep noise is real in this game so if you sprint or tack sprint around you will be really loud even walking uh, your your can be heard are reasonably loud, um, so it's important to be aware of your proximity to enemies, so that as you're getting close, like I am here in the enemy flank, I'm trying hard not to sprint around unless there is cover from other noise, like if there's explosions or other gunfire going on. That can be a good opportunity to kind of take a quick sprint um, to move locations and not hopefully be tracked using the audio from the other team. So. You'll see that in some of these clips in general. Part of what I've learned in Modern Warfare 2 to be more successful is moving slower and more deliberately. A lot of people have kind of taken that to the extreme and they don't want to move at all because of the footstep audio. I think that's a mistake. I think you can still play aggressively and tactically if you just move smart and be aware that when you're near enemies, you have to slow down um, and use your sprint Tactically, use it when it makes sense. If an enemy knows your location and sprinting is like, okay, they already know where I am, so the footsteps aren't as big a deal. Uh, I just need to move to a different location. Um, just keep those things in mind when you're moving around and then move to places where you can get the engagements you want with the weapon that you have. So for the 7.62 here, I'm looking for these medium range engagements. I'm not looking to get point blank with someone with a shotgun and I'm also not looking to get up high and snipe people from a long ways away. Um, I pick up this enemy's marksman rifle because I am getting a little low on my AK ammo. Um, and I thought I might get a little cheeky kill there. Didn't, didn't get that, got the hit marker. Uh, here, I think about repushing. In, in general, re-peeking in this game because the fast time to kill isn't a good idea. Here, you'll see me using that hip fire to ADS uh, advantage. Um, and that's why I recommend that laser sight, is so that you can get those quicker shots on target. And this next clip I want to show you with the cast off is on Asylum, El Asilo. And this is again showing probably more even of how you would play these maps. Um, there will be a difference in the way that you play a map with an assault rifle versus an SMG for a shotgun. So what you're seeing here is not just how I would play with the cast off 7.62, but in general how I play with assault rifles. Uh, although you will see that I can push some more aggressive fights with the cast off because it kills quickly um, and also because of the higher recoil, again, you're trying to keep closer to medium range um, and not challenge as much at longer distance. Um, this is also before I had unlocked a lot, um, some of the later attachments for the cast off. So this isn't even uh, with the full build that I showed you guys at the beginning of the video. Um, but here in this stairwell, th this second floor area on this part of the map is a good place to defend in general. Um, this is obviously team deathmatch. Um, this stairway, these uh, these railings screw me over more often than not, so I would recommend avoiding shooting through those rails as much as possible. So if you're defending from the top, you have an advantage because you can shoot over the rail at people, and people coming up and pushing from the bottom will have to typically either go for headshots or shoot through the rails, and I find that I hit the rail more often than not, and it costs me a lot of fights just because I waste half of my shots hitting railings instead of the enemy. So. Be aware of that when you're fighting in those stairwells. Um, if someone's got a position above you on that stairway, in general, don't uh, try to push it. Um, using drill charges from the outside of the building is a good way to challenge that position. Um, and otherwise, you know, unless you want to ego challenge someone because you don't think they're good enough, um, I would say that's a disadvantage position. Uh, here, I also show that after I run out of ammo, 
with the cast off, I switch and pick up someone else's M4, which I don't think this is a build I would really put on, really short barrel uh, in general. Uh, but it shows you the difference in killing power between this and the cast off, how quickly it puts people down versus this M4 where you'll see me come around and get um, position on guys and get several shots right on center mass um, and, and just not be able to finish them off because of the time to kill of the M4, especially with this guy's build. Uh, and there you'll see I shouldn't have re-peaked that, uh, especially not with that slower time to kill. And uh, lesson learned, the cast off does kill quickly though. This next clip is on Albagra Fortress, and if you haven't seen the video I did on that map, you can go check that out. But I think that Albagra Fortress is the most unbalanced map in Modern Warfare 2. And I do enjoy playing it now because I understand that if you can control this building here that you see me patrolling in this map, that you can actually have good games on this. That doesn't change the fact that I think that this map is busted because any team that can control this building can get a lockdown on the other team and, and basically a spawn trap on them. So out those windows to my left there, um, if you control this building, the, the enemy will spawn over there and you have a high point uh, to, to fight against them. You have overwatch on them coming out of the gate. It's just not a good balance map. So I would recommend on this map that you do your best to fight for this building. Um, regardless of the game mode, even if it's hard point, right? If you want your team to be able to control the hard points, it is to your advantage to keep the other team locked in the bad half of the map. Um, and you can use this building to fight and protect most hard points on the map. There's one or two that spawn on that side, uh, like at the, the Domination C point. Um, but in general, you want to patrol this area. And the cast off is, again, because of its consistent performance, uh, and its ability to kill reasonably quickly with just a few hits um, makes it strong for this map because there's not a lot of huge lines of sight and you can win a lot of these close-up battles uh, just by using its, its stopping power. So now let's go to Mercado and I want to show you a good way to kind of use the AK's strengths to use to kind of lock down one of the stronger parts of the map um, in Domination. I say I guess this isn't necessarily one of the stronger points on the map, but this area over here is a good way to transition uh, around the map and move between locations. Um, the stronger positions, especially here, are the building overlooking the B tunnel from that side, which is off to my right outside in this hallway where I'm looking there. Um, people will try to hold that, so if people are holding that building, this is a good route to take to challenge that. Going through that B tunnel will get you killed nearly every time. Mounting up here is a good way to catch people off guard, um, but also keep in mind that just in general, when you have success in a particular area after you get two or three kills, you really want to change locations because en enough people will start to come back and try to revenge kill you that eventually you will get overwhelmed. So here you'll see me fighting in this area uh, for a little while. And I'm even in this location, I'm moving between the hallway and this mounted position because I know they'll be coming back for me as long as I can keep them guessing on where to look first. I can have an advantage on some of these fights. And again, the cast off kills quickly. Um, but after a few kills here, I even know that I've probably pissed off enough people that they're gonna know that I'm in these areas. So I decide to try and move up um, to another location, get another kill um, before high alert gets me. Uh, warns me that I'm about to get killed from the other side, but another good strong position for the cast off. And the last clip I want to show you is on hydroelectric. Um, again, going to show you how you can use the the strengths of the 7.62, the killing power of it, to push up close. Here you can see me getting kind of an overlock watch position to look, but that's not really the strong point for the cast off. So I'm just looking to see if I can catch someone I'm aware, unaware to take some shots at them. But then I'm gonna push this outside flanking route towards their spawn to see if I can get closer and use the strength of the cast off. So I know that as I move in here, especially with an unsilenced weapon, I'm gonna be drawing attention, right? This is their spawn, so the idea here isn't to play conservatively and, um, and be sneaky, but to to challenge using the power of the cast off to even encourage them to come in and get close to me so that I can use 
uh, the stopping power to, to, to kill people as they move towards me. Keep in mind here, I'm, I'm still moving around. I don't want to hold one single position because then that gives them the advantage to push me with grenades or drill charges or overwhelm me. So even though I'm locking down this location, I am moving. Every time I kill someone, I'm moving to a different location. Then when I feel like people are going to be pushing in because I've killed several people there, I'll, you know, call in my airstrike for anyone who tries to push up on my old position and then fall back to choose a different angle. So in general, it's a good engagement technique is don't overstay your welcome in any particular area. I know it's tempting when you have success in one location to want to stay there and get more kills, but that will ultimately lead to your death. And so when you start to feel like, man, I've really locked this area down, that's their sign to move somewhere else because believe me, they will come back uh, to try and stop you. Um, and more often than not, you will lose out on that. So do not overstay your welcome in any one location. Okay, minions, hopefully you enjoyed that video on the cast off 762. If you want to see another video that I did um, to help you improve in the game, I did a video on Send Border Crossing. Where that map gets a lot of hate, but I actually really enjoy it, and I created a video to show some tips on how to play that map more effectively so that maybe you can enjoy a little bit more. So go check that out if you want to see more Modern Warfare 2 stuff from me. Uh, if you liked that video, leave me a like. If you didn't, leave me a dislike. If you want to see more stuff from me, uh, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.